Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA proposes $3.7 million civil penalty against NAVWORKS. P-51 Lopes Hope III returns to the air. Planes to be evicted from Jackson Hole Airport hangars. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's October 30th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. We knew there were problems with the NAVWORK story, but we weren't aware that there were nearly 4 million reasons why. The FAA has proposed a civil penalty of $3,685,000 against NAVWORKS Incorporated of Rolette, Texas, for allegedly producing and selling navigation units that did not meet FAA requirements and for allegedly misleading customers about those products. The FAA has strict requirements for navigation units to ensure the reliability of the information they provide, both to pilots and to air traffic controllers, said FAA Administrator Michael Huerta. Customers of these products must be able to trust that their equipment meets our safety standards. During an investigation, the FAA found that NAVWORKS produced certain ADSB navigation units containing an internal GPS chip that did not meet the FAA standards for integrity. The FAA is continuing to work with NAVWORKS customers to ensure the safety and accuracy of the affected products. In June 2017, the FAA published a final AD that requires owners to remove or disable these ADSB units. The AD also allows the owner to modify the unit by linking it with a GPS unit that contains a certified chip that meets FAA standards. NAVWORKS has been in communication with the FAA about the case. After the break, FAA investigating a second Air Canada landing at KSFO. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA is investigating an incident involving an Air Canada jet landing at KSFO for the second time in a year. The flight was initially cleared to land, but then was given instructions to go around due to a possible runway conflict. The go-around order was given five times in 30 seconds, but it was not acknowledged. A tower supervisor then used a flashing red light directed at the aircraft to tell them to abort their landing, but that was also ignored. The plane landed safely at about 21.30 local time. There's been another flight of a lawn chair suspended under a cluster of helium balloons. The most recent flight took place last Friday in South Africa. Bristol resident Tom Morgan rode in his makeshift aircraft to an altitude of about 8,000 feet. He had initially attempted the stunt in Botswana, but moved to South Africa after several failed attempts. His biggest challenges were reportedly finding suitable weather and protecting the balloons. Senior management of private jet providers FlexJet and Flight Options informed the Teamsters last week that they would not implement the merged collective bargaining agreement covering the combined FlexJet and Flight Option pilot groups that was awarded by an arbitrator on October 10, 2017. The award follows a lengthy arbitration process that was designed to establish contract terms for bringing all pilots in both groups under one set of rules. 
Airlander has announced the Henry Cookson Adventures will be the first to trial an expeditionary journey in 2018 as a precursor to Airlander's use in the luxury travel and adventure sector. Henry Cookson Adventures is a pioneering British luxury travel expert with a number of firsts to his name. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. There's another airworthy P-51 Mustang flying thanks to the efforts of Air Corps Aviation in Bemidji, Minnesota. The P-51C Lopes Hope III recently flew for the first time following restoration on October 16th. The airplane last flew in 1946. The aircraft belongs to the Texas Flying Legends Museum, which counts two other P-51s in its collection. The original Lopes Hope III was flown by Lt. Donald Lopez. Donald and Lopes Hope III served in the China-Burma Indian Theater with the 14th Air Force 23rd Fighter Group 75th Squadron. The 23rd Fighter Group was a descendant of the famous American Volunteer Group, or Flying Tigers, after the U.S. entered the war. The restoration project has taken three years and marks the third highly authentic Mustang restoration to be completed by Air Corps since 2011. The original Lopes Hope III was 42-103585, and this restoration is based on the P-51C 43-24907, according to the report. The Texas Flying Legends Museum decided to restore the Mustang using Lt. Lopez's color scheme to honor his service during World War II and after, as well as his commitment to the aviation community as Deputy Director of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. After these messages, planes to be evicted from Jackson Hole Airport hangars. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. The owner of some GA airplanes have been notified by Jackson Hole Aviation, the only FBO at Jackson Hole, Wyoming Airport, that they are about to lose their spaces and covered hangars. Last spring, one hangar and 14 T hangars were demolished by the airport to create space for commercial jet parking, new hangars, and other uses. The buildings that were raised were admittedly in poor shape, but that left 17 airplanes without any covered storage. But now, winter is coming. Jackson Hole Aviation Operations Manager Keaton Brown recently sent an email to those tenants saying that all the available space will be needed for current reservations and leases for the foreseeable future until new hangars are built. The displaced airplanes have until December 1st to remove their aircraft from the covered spaces so that others may use the space. The replacement for the demolished hangar has been put on hold in light of the decline in GA activity at the airport, according to the report. Airport Director Jim Elwood said that there has been a general decline in GA over the past several years, and Jackson Hole is no exception to that trend. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airport Unlimited is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you Wednesday.